Welcome back everyone. It's another Friday night. Another Friday. No, it's Saturday night. No, it's Friday night. That's right. On the menu tonight, we managed to uh, form a few of these uh, fake rib patties and had them on a bun and some chicken wings. Eating healthy on a Friday night, like always, like every Friday night. Dad's working on the laps today and we're going to test them out. So you're going to get to see them work. And if we're lucky, we won't set the garage on fire. So he's getting that one mounted up. And, uh, oh, there it goes again. What happened? Did you <laughs> drop it up? <laughs> Mysteriously, fell over my fingers. We can't go on together. Do you think we got a. in exactly the same spot? Wouldn't that be something if it went in the exact same spot? No. No, of course not. I need room. You held your tongue at just the right angle that it didn't go in the right spot. So what I wanted to show you guys tonight, and I'm going to work on something else. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to work on. I'm going to figure something else out. I'm probably going to put water in the rad and see if we get any leaks. But anyway, I want to show you guys this uh, steering wheel and how this works inside here. And uh, I've already removed the keyway and um, cleaned up the shaft so I can get the steering wheel off so you guys don't watch me struggle. Because uh, you don't want to watch me struggle, do you? So let me get you up on a tripod and I'll show you what's all inside of here. There is a gear reduction and I'll show you how that works and what's inside. You can do the, do the honors. <laughs> Don't stick your finger there. <laughs> I think you did that once and you realize it's kind of hot. There you go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me. Oh, do I. If anyone wants to send me money, my birthday's coming up. Turn it up, turn, turn up the wick, turn down the wick. Make yeah. The, make the sauces black. Look at that, eh? Yeah. Prime up. How come that one just went out? I don't know. You probably took the wick down too long. Oh, no. no. Oh, try it again. Turn, up the wick, turn down the wick. Stop. <laughs> don't let it smoke. No too black long. smoke. There we go. Mm hmm. Cool. Right on the car. Romantic. That's romantic. Oh, wow. That's one. Let's turn off this thing. This LED blasting in my face. There we go. Holy. That's pretty bright, actually. You know, once it goes through those magnifiers. Oh, do you know? Jeez, that's bright. <laughs> that's kind of impressive, actually. You kind of look against the wall. It does shed a fair amount of light. Well, considering, I guess, it's supposed to only be lantern, eh? It's just lanterns, and it goes through those magnifiers. From the side, not nice much, but... Light. Nice parking light. Nice parking light. Yeah. Set that, turn on the parking light. You got to get it with the, with the matches. Yeah, neat. Kind of like almost scary coming at you down a dark, down a dark road with a guy sitting inside with a black cape on and a scythe in his hand. The deer's got a big set of eyes, eh? <laughs> yeah. White eyes on that deer. Anyway, <clears throat> cool. So far, the one leak. That tightened up. Seen a new fuck it is that wouldn't have been the thought where I thought the leak was. I just thought it'd been on the bottom of the rat. Generally, yeah. Cause that's got the poor end on it. Yeah, exactly. It's got the part that's missing a lot of the the nipple in there. Stop and get an air chuck going and blow that water out of there that was leaking. All right, we'll check for leaks. You got one. You gotta stop, you already got one. Stop. What are we doing? Did you tighten this one? All right, we gotta tighten her up. All right, clamps are all good. We got the clamps all tightened up. There's no leaks there, but looks like I got a rad leak right there. So we'll have to drain it back down and Get some, ram some epoxy into that hole. 
Just keep taking up holes, filling up holes. Herman's here again. Say hi, Herm. Hello, guys. <laughs> now we have a little pinhole leak, so out with the epoxy again. They're bandaged up. Wait for a week for that to dry. And then the next hole. And eventually we'll have the whole radiator covered in epoxy and we'll have a nice shell. Nice air radiator shell. Made of epoxy. <laughs> That's working on that bracket inside there, if you can see it. Zoom you out a bit. It's working getting that bracket off there for the fire extinguisher. That is moved on here to the other thing here. To the mount for this the thing. extinguisher. Full of chocolates. Smarties. Yeah, that was gonna go in there. He's gonna move that bracket up and then it's gonna sit in there. So we need to make a couple holes and he's gonna use a brass rivet to hold that in place. We're just sitting here talking about, my dad had brought these rivets out there, my grandfather's rivets, and he's been gone for, what's he been gone for, 12 years now? 14 years now, I think. Mm -hmm. Since what, 2010, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Been gone a while. Yeah, something around there. Somewhere in there. Anyway, he had these. My grandfather, my dad's dad, had these. Three eighths to one inch, number 10. Uh, belt rivets. Made in Canada. Parmenter and Bullock. Gannon Oak, Canada. So we sort of looked into that, and that company was in business from, I think, about 1900, or they made rivets from 1900 till 1960. So the, the youngest these could be would be 60, 60 some years old. But it looks like they might be. 2009. 2009, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. Brass. Belt rivets and burrs. Show them what you did. Show them what you done. Yeah, that's good. Oh. Can't get that. Oh. I, I snapped it in there so hard you can't get the fucker out. I say fuck, it's a family show. Yeah, it looks good, I think. If we have a real fire. We're screwed. People will say, hey, grab that fire extinguisher. Say, so, well, uh, there's nothing in the fucking thing. No, I'm saving that much. <laughs> what we could do is gut that thing out, clean it out really well, and then um, fill it with whiskey, probably. <laughs> it would be just cheaper to get a whiskey he, bottle? Don't think he likes that idea. <laughs> yeah, it would actually be cheaper just to mount a whiskey just bottle in that place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to hell with, to, Morgan. To hell with the fire extinguisher, put a bottle on <laughs> Captain Morgan. Oh, you can put the, the type that uh, you see at the bars, right? That's got the little yeah. the little thing underneath there. And you go, yeah. and probably two more of those. <laughs> All right, next morning, everyone's gone home. Well, I hope they're gone home. They better be gone home. I didn't hear them in the night. And we got that patch. Holding water. No drips. No drips on the floor. It's filled back up. So uh, we'll leave it sit. You know, maybe the next time it reveals a leak, it'll be all warmed up and I can pinpoint a few little areas again where I got to have to patch things up and just keep on trucking from there. Anyway, there was something else I wanted to show you guys. Uh, and it was the um, steering wheel and the uh, planetary gears, ring gear, and sun gear and all that kind of stuff. thought that might be kind of cool for a lot of you guys to see. Well, many of you guys have already, already know about this. Um, it was interesting to me when I first saw it because I don't look into a lot of steering wheels. So anyway, let me get you on the camera. All right. All right. I think I got enough light in here. I don't know. It's hard to get light in here. In the dark sparks, dark sparks, dark spots in the shop. You know, when you, it's a, kind of a cool looking nut, isn't it really? So I've taken this apart before and cleaned this up so I could actually access it. And not struggle too much for you guys but that comes off it's almost a quick release like uh like stevens i might do that if i wasn't so afraid of using, losing that key that comes off there is a key right here goes in the keyway and then this collar comes off got a bit of a knurl on it. First time I took it off I used the, uh, I actually used these, these Klein, I don't even know where I put them. I had some tools in my hand. Did you guys see where I put them? No. Huh? You guys aren't really that great at help, to be honest with you. 
Anyway, these, uh, these are pretty handy, taking this off. I haven't found a use for these other than this, so it's uh, we're going to call it a specialized tool now. <laughs> Charge an extra hundred bucks for it. Anyway, this collar comes off. <clears throat> that was, the point of this too is I, I wanted to show you, I actually wanted to clean up some of these parts as well. We'll clean up this. It's got this, it's got a lot of thread on it. It comes off. Underneath there it hides your sun gear and the planetary gear carrier and the planetary gears and the ring gear. So anyway, that all comes off. And you can see, hopefully you guys can see that. Some interesting knurling on there. I just wanted to get all the the hand grease of a hundred years off there and tidy that up before I put it back together. Some grease in there. And inside there, so then you got the steering shaft adapter, I guess. Comes out. So in there, so there you got nine. Nine gears. So that comes off. And it's incidental, but this, these guys here, these uh, planetaries, have uh, I think it was 13 on there. Doesn't really matter because the ring gear has got 36. So this one is nine. This one's 36. So you got a four to one ratio there. So these all come out, and I'll probably take them out, tie that all up, put, put some fresh new grease in there. Not that it matters because you know there's probably enough grease in there for the next hundred years because uh, where is it going, right? So I just thought you guys might think that was interesting. I'm going to here. I'll even move it. You see it still? If I put this back, I'll move the wheel for you. There you go. Check that out. Huh? <clears throat> so I was talking to Rob and uh, Stephen about this the other day. That you actually have a better. Um, advantage than the four to one ratio because you have a steering wheel and from here to the outside of the steering wheel you basically have a very long lever of nine inches so you have the mechanical advantage of that nine inch lever plus you have a four to one ratio so it's not just a uh, a four to one ratio that that makes steering easier it's that lever on the end of it think of it like uh, a bicycle so you got the gears at the back, the, you know, the gear set at the back, gear set at the front, and then you also have a lever in that you have the pedal arms. So the longer the pedal arms, the, the easier it is to uh, to push that around. So anyway, I thought that might be interesting too. I'm going to see if I can tidy that up with a little uh, emery and maybe some brake clean. The grease out there. <laughs> what do you find under tons of 100-year-old grease or 100-year-old... There you go. I mean, brass. I didn't, I would never have realized that was brass. So anyway, that cleaned up uh, real nice. And I kind of started, I couldn't get it off mostly. And I started sanding a bit with a piece of emery. I'm like, hmm, what's this gold dust that's starting to come off of stuff? And it's uh, yeah, brass. So there you go. I got one pin taken out. So note the five that's stamped there. I didn't try to get the rest of these pins up. I assume they probably do come out, but um, I'm not going to force them. Why bother, huh? So anyway, that cleaned up real beautiful. So here's the rest. Another interesting thing, I don't know, didn't see this before, it was obviously, plug oh, it was obviously plugged up, but that, that cover has a hole in it. I don't know what that, I assume that hole, so there's a hole there, when they drilled through, they, oh, you know what they did? I was wondering about this. I was wondering why there was a shaft. So they drilled that through and came through there. So let's see, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at it, it's tapped. So that's actually tapped. So this would have went on, tightens on, and then they would have had a small set screw to hold this in place. I was thinking it was for, um, to hold, uh, they could pump some grease in there, but no, that's what it's for. Cause it's actually, it's got thread on it. So that's slot. So, hey, if you're wondering, and yours is covered up with dirt, well, there you go. It's, uh, well, how do you, what do you think about that, huh? That's for a grub screw to stop this collar from backing off. <laughs> Who knew? Anyway, what I was going to say was, remember back there at the, on the, um, on that spider, on the, the planetary holder, 
had a five. Well, there you go. You got a five on all these guys too. So I assume they just had a big box and these ones are fives, those are fives, and they just match them all up. There's your, I guess it's a steering post adapter, I'm gonna call it. And that's one of your pins. This goes in here. And although there was lots of grease in there, apparently there's not enough grease in there, or it was maybe made too tight. And that slot right there is just war, and that would be from this pin, you know, the wheel turning and this, this pin sliding back and forth. That's the range of movement right there, is that distance, about a half turn, really. Huh. Even with all that grease, 100 years will still wear that down. Again, with the theme of Ford, carries on. Got Ford stamped into that collar. I'm not gonna clean this up. I'm, I mean, this is just fine. I don't really care about that. Let it look dirty and, uh, and old. So I'm gonna put it all back together, put some grease in there. Anyway, just thought you might find a few of those little things interesting. And uh, with the brass on the, uh, on the uh, matching part for that. So anyway, guys. Hope you have a great week. Hope you had a great week before this. And, um, you know, just uh, keep on trucking, I guess. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. All right, on to other things. Let's just add on to this video and make it longer. So, we got a battery, six volt battery. And let me show you where it was before. Take another light. <clears throat> That light doesn't work. <laughs> okay, Vince. Uh, light. All right, yeah, so before it was uh, down in there. Oh, somebody's added a little extension on there. Oh, that'll work. Cables should be plenty long enough. I don't want to put it in there anymore. I don't know why somebody put it in there, but they did, and they just wanted to get it out of the way. So originally, and after just kind of poking around a bit here, then realizing what I had, ugh. <clears throat> originally, it was here. So this is, they had a little piece of angle iron here, right here, a couple bolts, they're not doing anything. And I thought, well, how did they mount from here to here? Well, then I got looking. Those guys don't belong here. And they are six inch spaced same as these are, six inch space, six inch space, six inch space. So I've seen them before with the batteries mounted down in this hole. So I think that's what I want to do. The six volt battery does mount in there with uh, a little bit of room still left. I'm not sure on the height yet. I'll have to kind of work that out. Probably have it drop down so it's kind of sitting, <laughs> just keep wandering away with this camera. Uh, so it's sitting about here and maybe there, yeah, maybe there sitting about level there. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe just below, just sunk in. Don't want it hanging down below, but, uh, you know, I don't want, uh, it's just going to help me again. I don't want it so low that something hits it and I don't want it so high that, you know, whatever, that these, well, these don't need to be like this. We can fix this up. This will be better. We'll do better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what do we got to do? <clears throat> we need to make a bracket to hold that. <clears throat> so, it's the battery. First of all, we need to make a box for the battery to sit in. And I'll set you up on the tripod, show you what I'm doing there. And um, we also need to, you don't need to see that. That's not important. It's not important at all. Um... You need to make a little box for the battery to sit on. So that spacing is six inches. This is nine, nine inches here to here. So six would go there and there. So we're not just gonna sit that on top of that, that strap mount. We're gonna make a box and then we're gonna weld the box to the strap mount. Making sense? And then we'll figure out something for a, for a hold down. No big deal. That's, that's neither here nor there, it's nothing. So first of all, we gotta make a box. So let me set you up on a Tripod, let's get cracking on that. We got, first of all, we got seven. Seven gives us a little bit of fudge room. So, uh, so we're gonna cut 245, so we got a 90. 
so we can bend it over. If we have to, we'll weld the bottom seam. So let's take a knockoff seven. So we got, we got to give it more than seven. We got to give it like seven and an eighth because we need to, um, we're going to bend it. He didn't bend it. So we have to accommodate the bend radius. So we'll just give it seven and an eighth, which we'll call seven. Seven and eight there. And let's, um, what do we gotta do? We gotta knock off some couple 45s. There's our line. And we go like this. Yeah, let's try this way. <clears throat> Square that up as best we can. Kinda make it, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me just zoom you in a bit there. You got to like extrapolate a little bit. So imagine that this line continues on into this line. So give yourself a little bit of wiggle room there. And if you got a little wiggle room and the seam isn't totally closed, but it's, you know, this and this are at a 90, then you can just fill it with weld. It's not a big deal. So let's get that reasonable. Actually, let's just scratch, scratch it in there. You guys can't see nothing, can you? We got that. I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side, and I'm gonna try my best to block you. So there's our scratch lines. So we're gonna cut this out, make two cuts basically, right? Make sense? Fold them together, and I have to uh, make 45 over here. Same thing because this is going to be the closer on, you know, the end angle. So, I mean, there we go. We got, um, in the matter of a few bends, we got uh, half our box. So basically, we just got to make that same cut again. You can see it. <laughs> that same little cut over here. And uh, a single cut over to match this up. So, let's check what we got here. I mean, that's pretty well dead nut square there. And here... Same. Yep. We were a square on that box. So, I mean, we, uh, that turned out pretty good. Actually, you know, we could probably relieve that slightly because I could uh, afford to kick it in a touch more, but eh, let's not get fancy. The proof is not uh, in the pudding. It's in eating the pudding. So let's see what we got over here. See if the battery actually fits. And it does fits with a wee bit of wiggle room because we're going to need that wiggle room to put to kind of line it with some rubber, right? Because uh, you don't want it vibrating and dancing against there and wearing through the battery. Battery. I call it a battery. Some people don't like that. I say battery. <laughs> I don't know. I think, don't we call it battery? I know it's a battery, but whatever. You know what I'm saying. So let's uh, finish up our little 45s. Finish it up over here. I don't even know why my camera shut off at the end there, but whatever. Anyway, so... Yeah, so that bit... That's hot, by the way. Don't touch that. <laughs> that bit is where we heat it up and it kind of tore away, so we'll fix that up at the end when I get it all squared up. And, uh, yeah, just keep on squaring up as we go. No big deal. All right, there's our box. There's our, oh, that's a lot. That's square. That's square. That's square. We're square. So, oh, and we, uh, just the slightest of rock. Okay. 
whatever. I mean, uh, yeah, the proof of the pudding is, uh, you know the rest of it. It's in the eating. Well, I shut this welder off so you guys can hear a thing I say. And turn that gas off. Don't waste the gas. <laughs> You know, in retrospect, it would have been faster just to uh, mock it up and probably four pieces and weld it, but whatever. I was, uh, had some time on my hands today. So there we go. We got a little bit of fudge room all the way around. And that's how that's going to go into that tray. Like I said, we got to put a bit of rubber. Rubber on the bottom, rubber on the side, so that's going to take up that space and be tickety-boo. How we're gonna make a strap, well, we can probably just take from here, come all the way over. Um, what else? Anyone with some other ideas? Can, can I do? No. We'll get to that when I get to it, right? We'll figure it out, it's all right. Okay, we gotta move on to the truck now and make that, um, make that strap. There's two straps, the six inch on center straps. I'm going to weld our tray onto it. So let's do that. I don't know. There's only one way to know, and that's by knowing. So let's get that battery up in there and see what looks about right. The ones I see on the internet look like they're sitting about somewhere about there. Right out there. So, what's that measure top to bottom? Oh, grab tape measure. Figure it out. Figure it out, man. So, we got the material. And let's see what we get. That should give us enough room we can tip it and take it out, too, right? If you get it too high, you'll never get the darn thing out. So, to the top of that rail gives me. 11 11 inches Am I heading your way? It's alright It's alright, right with that 11 inches So that looks about right And if you have it, oh, you got it right there It's that 10 and a half minute. Can I still take it out? Yeah, you can still tip it out So that's the idea You need to still be able to get the darn thing out And how low is it? It's not lower than the transmission so, not that I want the transmission to hit, but if it's not lower than the transmission or the rear end, which it's not, looks to be about the same height, then no, it's also not lower than the than the front axle either. So, good. I think we're good with that. All right, we got a piece of six, a six foot piece of one inch flat bar. So, well, let's start by cutting that in half anyway. All right, unlike the last one, we shouldn't have to notch anything. We should be able to just do some bends, just some heat and some bends. I don't think this will tear out though. Okay, so what do we got? What did I say, 10 and a half? Uh, let's add, this is just an eighth. So we'll just add, uh, we'll round it up, two eighths. We'll add a quarter in there. Just for a nice round number. So we'll make it 10 and three quarter down. So, 10 and three quarter. So let's get that in. Let's bend a 90 into that. Start off with that, huh? <laughs> you guys ever bend the uh, flat bar crooked? I have. Plenty of, plenty of times. And then uh, I could always show you a trick for bending flat bar on the edge. You don't have to bend it the other way. You can always actually bend it on the edge, but that's a trick for another time. Get that. We'll cinch in. Okay. Let's get some heat on that and bend it over. Let's try it. Let's see where we get. Get the rest of the, uh, the ski slope on the uh, in the vise and press it in. Oh. 
What do you think? Pretty straight? Looking good? Close as shit is to swearing. All right, next angle. <laughs> All right, is this making any sense? Okay, so we got this drop right here, right? That was our original drop of 10 and three quarter, minus that bit there, and then out towards the step, we're going eight to there. If we go straight up from here, that gets us just inside the, um, the step because that's where we want to be uh, kind of tucked up and under so then we're going to come up I wrote this down here can you see it five inches so from here we got to come up five inches and make another little turn and then cut it off so let's uh bend that next see if we can be successful about that and bend that all right all right Let's hope that's it. Yep, yep, yep. All right, weld it up. That's the battery in there. That's it. Goes in there. Goes in the basket. All we gotta do is come up with a way of strapping it down, but that shouldn't be too hard. We'll go with a strap from here, you know, over top, and that's it. Or two clamps. Clamp here, clamp there. Uh, that's it. Okay. Next is we should get some paint on that, and then we can uh, try fitting it up in the truck. All right, next day, but what did I forget? What did I talk about? How many times did I say it? I need some hold downs for this thing, right? So let's see where we're gonna go here. The battery, we have the positive at the front of the rack. So let's go with a, in case I have to make a solid bar across here, let's go right here, negatives back here. If anything from here touches the negative to the chassis, it doesn't matter, it's, it's all, ground so it doesn't matter up here might be something different if it goes to ground right <clears throat> so a couple clamps hold down clamps a couple of these guys little biscuits just cut them off with some flat iron or, um, flat flat steel flat rod no not flat rod <clears throat> we'll stick these down here making some sense We'll weld a threaded rod on so that it drops through about an inch and a half. So that threaded rod will get welded onto here, onto the clip. And then from underneath, <clears throat> we will um, we'll just use some, some little wing nuts. I think this is, what is that, 3 eighths or something like that. Small stuff. So there you go. So you do a little bit of welding, finish up. And then we can try, you know what I wanted to do? I've been meaning to try this for a little while now. Is, uh, where did I put it? I wanted to spray the whole thing and kind of guard it, like rubber guard it with this flex seal. It's liquid rubber in a can. So I guess we'll find out. Excellent for her. skylights, gutters, downspouts, flashings, windowsills, roof leaks, chimneys, uh, Model T trucks, vent pipes, RVs and campers. Yeah, so it's all in there. All the great uh, vitamins and minerals, it's all in there. So I'd already painted this, but I'm gonna repaint it with this stuff after I'm done welding that, those little tabs down there and, uh, and these guys. And then we'll spray it with some Flex Seal and see how that holds up. That might be good, you know, rock guard it.
for that uh, 10 mile an hour trip I'm taking. All right, let's get this flipped over, get some welding done. So some people aren't aware of how to do this, and I realize it's probably pretty simple for most of you guys, but uh, if you've got threaded rod and you're wondering like, how do I make it so I can get the nut back on and things like that, which this one probably is easy enough, but uh, probably got a freshly cut one around here somewhere. So you either take a file or you take a grinder with a flapper or something like that. I use this quite often if I'm on the job. I've got a couple battery pack type ones that I use all the time. I don't have a grinder kicking around, but uh, so that one's pretty rough looking as you can see. Just, and it's tough. I mean, it's tough to get a nut to start or it's kind of chewed up. And quite often what I do is on a job is I use uh, bolts that are much longer than what I need. So then what I do is I just take my uh, slitting disc, cut the bolt down to what I need it to be, and uh, then clean up the end. Um, I do that because I don't want to have to carry like, you know, five different lengths of bolts or, or screws in my box, right? Just have them all basically one length or just two common lengths and then just make them what you need. So anyway, just take them like this. Take them on your grinder or flapper. Just grind a bevel into that. easier with a flapper so you got like a bit of a, a bit of a crown to it and then boom you're done away you go just a tip for you guys who don't know and some of you don't and probably most of you do okay weld our mount tabs on get them situated where i want them right there Uh, I know I do everything by gauge on my welder, so a 12 gauge, 18 volt, 280 inch per minute. It's about right for me on this. There, hear that? How that sounds? Nice, huh? Done and done on that side. Next side. Let's go and get that ground strap to stay on there. That'd be nice. No, I guess not. It's still hot. And I'm not wearing a glove. Where's your gloves, Vids? <laughs> oh, there. That's actually still a bit hot. So that's how that's going to work. I think that's more than good enough. That'll hold it down. What's that they say? That ain't going nowhere. Okay, guys. So that's it. I'll blow some paint on it tonight. Yeah, but I just wanted to show this to you and wrap it up. And there you go. It's in there. That's where it sits. It's, uh, it's centered. 
and there's lots of room and the hold downs those work pretty good like i said ain't going nowhere so um i might dress this up and put a instead of these these uh bolts these hex head bolts maybe put some carriage styles on there maybe kind of make it blend in a little better that's what i had for today anyway but um anyway yeah those hold downs work really good um things aren't exactly square i mean these holes are perfectly aligned between these stirrups the place that they had the holes up there were about oh well, i don't know maybe half inch off so i kind of had to fudge out a little bit um i didn't want to change these holes because i don't want to have to drill more holes in this step so we left that where it is and if it's kind of bugging me that it maybe it's probably not going to bug me <laughs> <laughs> let's face it once i get some pan it's not going to bug me anymore so it doesn't sit i mean it sits pretty level but it could be better but you know what hey what's level on this truck i don't even know what's plumbing level <laughs> we'll just go with that so um we're all good there so that's that's how that goes that's that's a battery in a in a step so anyway guys hope you had a great week we're gonna have a better week coming up hope you always have a better week coming up so, so I talk to you next time. Take it easy.